And welcome back. Governor Newsom announced today that starting Thursday, a smartphone app will be available for all Californians that will enable you to get alerted if you've spent time near somebody who tests positive for COVID. The California Notify app was first tested and used in the University of California system. Joining us now to talk more about it is UC Berkeley's Assistant Vice Chancellor for University Health Services, Guy Nicolette. Thank you so much, Guy, for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely, because a lot of people have questions about this app. Uh, of course, the UC Berkeley community has been using it since November 16th. How did UC become part of this pilot program to test out the technology? Well, it's my understanding that uh, UC San Diego led the charge on that, and uh, ultimately five campuses uh, joined the pilot. Um, and I think, you know, part of the um, impetus to do that was that we had you know, quite a bit of uh, folks still on campus um, that, you know, we could tap into. And I think that's bearing itself out in the numbers. I think um, UC credits about 200,000 um, folks that have uh, joined in one way or the other, either the Apple or the Google platform. And uh, I think at UC Berkeley, we've had somewhere around 20,000 um, sign up for the, for the notification system. And so obviously the more that join up, the more that um, participate, the, the better it works. Yeah, about 20,000 UC Berkeley out of a community of how many people? Like 70,000-ish or something between students yeah, and faculty? Yeah, right. We count it somewhere in the 60 to 70,000 range. Yes, that was a good guess on my part. I still remember yeah, from my UC guess. Berkeley days. Uh, <laughs> so I want to ask you, basically, uh, I got the option today, right? I know you have to opt in, and I did it today on my iPhone. It's very easy. We have some video of that to show our viewers. In the meantime, can you kind of walk us through it on the iPhone, um, what you need to do? Great. Um, I'm certainly no tech expert, but but on the uh, iPhone, it's as easy as going to your uh, settings, um, and there's a slider for exposure notification system. There it is. Um, you turn on that slider, and um, it it verifies what um, county you're in, you know, what state you're in, and then it starts to verify your county. And if it's enabled in that uh, location, mm -hmm. you're all set. That's all you really need to do. Okay. So then, basically. Um, what would the notification instruct you to do if it later determines that you have been near someone who tested positive? Yeah, there's a, a really helpful um, one or two page uh, PDF that was developed and it leads you through the hypothetical story. I don't remember their names, but we'll just, I think they were Alice and Bob. It was Alice, Alice and Bob, Bob. yeah. <laughs> okay, good, <laughs> you've seen it. Um, they you know, are sitting at a park bench or sitting at, at some location and they have a per protracted conversation. Yeah, in um, fact, you know what, um, Guy, I have the Google video they put out. I know it's a little different oh, for perfect. iPhone and Android, but let's go ahead and show that first. For every phone that's opted in, our technology disguises your identity by generating a random sequence of numbers that change every few minutes. Then using Bluetooth, anytime your phone detects another phone close by that's also opted in, the two exchange those random numbers. If in the future someone's positive for COVID-19, they can report that positive result in their app. Any phones that had exchanged random numbers in the last 14 days will receive a notification that they may have been exposed to COVID-19 without revealing their identity. So then you find out, and Guy, I guess the point of this is if you know you had been near somebody who later tests positive, then you would either quarantine or go get tested yourself. Is that what you encourage your student community to do? Yeah, the app um, notifies you once once that notification comes up, it, it then tells you essentially what to do. And for, for our subscribers, for those folks uh, connected to UC Berkeley, it gives them instructions on who to call. Our contact tracing team then uh, connects with them, and then it becomes a, a bit more of a traditional you know, contact tracing situation where you're ultimately told to either quarantine, isolate, or get tested depending on the situation the toolkit it's one tool in really helping contain COVID it's not the whole thing yeah no I think that's a great point that um, really this augments traditional contact tracing you know traditional contact tracing is really heavily reliant on the art of skillful uh, skillful questions and kind of relying or trust in the veracity of, of the answers given and then just diligent work kind of following the timeline and contacting those with significant exposure mm -hmm. the app adds a kind of a layer on top of it. It doesn't replace it, um, but it adds a layer on top of it. And the value comes really, in my opinion, um, from 
contact tracing the folks that the case doesn't know, basically strangers. So it's, it's helping identify folks that couldn't be identified in a typical case investigation. In the three weeks that UC Berkeley has had it, have you noticed any glitches or any false positives or anything like that? No, we've only had, we've only given out two keys. Um, so, you know, not, not a whole lot yet, but we're expecting more as, as the surge goes, unfortunately, uh, with it will come more folks that, uh, you know, will, will get more experience using the app. Um, there likely will, just with any technology like this, even with traditional contact tracing, there are going to be some false positives that we are going to unnecessarily uh, quarantine or at least contact folks that um, really weren't significantly exposed. But that's that's how this system, you know, that's how the entire system goes. And I, I think that with refinements in the technology um, and us learning how it really works and how, you know, where it's not best deployed, um, we'll continue to refine it and get better and better and better about, you know, who, who we really do ultimately isolate and quarantine. That Google video that we showed made the point, and the governor did as well, that this doesn't track people's identities or locations. Uh, but clearly some people, judging on social media comments, um, are worried about that aspect, yeah. the privacy. Uh, was that a concern for the campus community? Oh, absolutely. We wrestled with that quite a bit um, because we all of us value the, the privacy and certainly on the medical side, you know, we're bound by several laws, HIPAA included, uh, that really in, reinforces that uh, need to, to, to question privacy and security when, when you're thinking about new technologies. But it, it was shown to us a number of times and, and with a number of experts in privacy and security, they felt like this was uh, about as secure as you could get with this, with this type of system. All right, so no sign of any privacy breaches. Uh, overall, how are things going at UC Berkeley? It is a huge campus, and I recognize most students have not been on campus, um, but how is it going? And then do you think there's a chance that people will come back in greater numbers next semester in January? Yeah, that's a good question. So we've actually, I think through a combination of uh, planning some luck um, and really being diligent in our contact tracing, you know, the on-campus experience has been uh, lower risk and lower exposure than, than the community. So our positivity rate up until um, Thanksgiving was somewhere in the 0.2 or 0.3% range. And we were, I think we cumulatively tested, you know, uh, 12,000 unique individuals with 60 or 70 or 80,000 uh, tests. Mm -hmm. So we're doing a lot of testing. Uh, we really haven't found um, many positive, which is good. The students are great. Um, and e even on campus, um, living on campus in dorms, which we were really worried about, um, uh, there's almost no sign of transmission that's happened in the dorms or very, very little. So with that experience that we've had, uh, that led us to believe that we could probably handle, you know, we really restricted campus uh, census quite a bit and, and dorm census quite a bit. We could handle a little bit more. And it's been my um, belief that we could actually handle more than we handled in fall and still have low positivity rates. Well, and this app would only help. Well, Guy, I realize there are a lot of unknowns about the future and we don't know everything, mm -hmm. but it certainly sounds sure. like you're moving in the right direction. And I'm glad to hear that my uh, Cal, you know, uh, community is still making the right choices. So that's good to hear. Uh, Guy Nicolette, thank you so much for your time and insight. Thank you so much for having me. Take